Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, after we did the deck profile with Dustin, I was doing some thinking, and I realized I have no idea how to pendulum summon. So I brought Dustin back today, and he's going to explain to us what pendulum summoning is, and how you do it, and how you can do it correctly. So from there, I'm going to turn it over to Dustin, and he can kind of explain everything to you. Alright, so um, pendulum, uh, pendulum summoning, new uh, mechanic in the game. A lot of people still question you know, how to do it, and whatever people are confused by it. They get upset because they can't figure it out. Can explain it until you're blue in the face and it doesn't matter but I will try to do my best since I feel like I have it down pretty well um, uh, I don't sorry I don't have a correct map for this but you still have your five monster zones and your five spell and trap card zones well on the uh, left and right sides of those between your field and your uh, extra deck your deck and graveyard or even between those, like technically the field hasn't like here, but um, sorry, I know your camera angle is not very oh, okay. great, but I don't know, just wherever you have room for it, it's fine as long as it's distinguishable. Uh, you have your pendulum zones where you can play pendulum monsters in them. They don't count as monsters though, they count as spell cards, that's why they're half green. Uh, while they're in the pendulum zones, they are spells and they have their pendulum effect, which is the little text box on the top between the picture and the, the monster effect text box. So while they're in the pendulum spell zones, that is the effect you go by. They also have the scale numbers, like the ones that I have here are four and nine. So right now, it doesn't matter which zone you put them in. So I could have this on the left, this on the right, or vice versa. Um, I don't know, I like to put my scout on the right, just preference, do whatever. Um, anyway, if you have a pendulum in each zone, you can then, once per turn, perform an inherent special summon of one or more, one or more monsters from your hand or face up in your extra deck. Now, the way monsters go face up in your extra deck is if you, they only work with pendulums. If, if you have a pendulum monster or a pendulum spell that would go to the graveyard, let's say you typhoon this or you torrential this, Instead of going to the graveyard, they go straight to the extra deck, face up. Uh, so, I have these two in my extra deck already, and then I have two in my hand. Uh, during your main phase one or two, you can perform a pendulum summon. You check the scale numbers. This is a four, this is a nine. Whatever the scale numbers are, you can special summon one or more monsters from your hand or face up in your extra deck that are that have levels that are between the two numbers. They cannot include the two numbers. So I have a 4 and a 9, so I can special summon anything from 5 to 8. So I have a 6, a 7, and in my extra deck I have an 8 and a 6. So those can all come out, and it's all one. It's an inherent special summon of multiple monsters at the same time. So if you Bottomless Trap Hole, or you Solemn Morning, or you Black Horn of Heaven, they all die. Um, now, if you do end up black horn, I mean, do they just go back to the extra deck? No. When you negate the summon of a pendulum, okay. when you negate a pendulum summon, they go to the, they go to the graveyard. If you torrential, they go to the extra deck. If you bottomless, they do get banished because it does banish them. Uh, it destroys them. It banishes them. It doesn't send them to the graveyard or anything. So, uh, yeah, those three cards will definitely just just stop this. Um, uh, I was going to explain one more thing. Sorry, uh, forgot what it was. Uh, pendulum spells. You cannot set them face down. So, for example, if your opponent has anti-spell fragrance, which says you can't activate spells, you have to set them first. You just plain can't play pendulums in your pendulum zone because you cannot activate a spell from your hand. So, yeah, you can't set them face down. You also cannot replace them like you can field spells. Uh, field spells, you can send one to the graveyard to uh, play one over it. Uh, let me reiterate on that. It is send. They changed it. It is not destroyed anymore. So Gear Town, rest in peace. Um, but anyway, yeah, you cannot. Let's say I have uh, like a different scale I want to play from my hand. I can't just do this and replace it. Nope. You have to wait till it dies. You have to kill it yourself. Whatever. Uh, you cannot replace it. Um, so the oh, sorry. One more thing. The uh, pendulum summon the monsters that are in your hand don't have to be pendulum monsters. You can do it uh, Let's see Okay, these are a bad example because they can't be special summon, but uh, If you have 
we'll say summons coal, why not? If you have the proper scales and you have like a summons coal and a pendulum monster in your hand, you can special summon them both. It doesn't have to be pendulum monsters. Obviously pendulum monsters can only go in the extra deck, so that's that's self-explanatory. Now it, I'll explain, in this scenario I wouldn't be able to do summon skull because of his effect. You, you obviously have to follow the, the card effects. Um, he says you can't special summon any monsters except, except for clean monsters. So, um, but normally, in any other scenario, like Time Gazer and Stargazer Magician, one and eight, so anything two to seven, that includes anything that's not a pendulum monster as long as it doesn't have a summoning condition. So, okay. That's basically a rundown. Thank you very much, Dustin. I hope that everybody watching this now understands pendulums a little bit easier, and we'll see if anybody starts playing them more. So, with that, I will let you guys go. This is Nate from the Medical, signing out. Peace. Oh,